Praise the Lord, everybody. Dr. Thomas Manton IV here. I have an amazing message for you today. For the whole body of Christ, because um, the Holy Spirit has put his blessed finger on something and said, Son, I want you to address this. So get ready for some riveting information, facts, prophetic statements, teaching. It's all pastoral counseling, <laughs> prayer anointing that destroys the yoke, Isaiah 10, 27. It's all going to flow. My God, I feel the anointing already. Father, thank you for thinking through my mind, speaking through my lips what's on your mind and heart for the church, for your people around the world, and even people that are not saved. They're going to have to walk into this. Once they get saved, they're going to have to get delivered. So I, I heard the Lord speak this word to me last week, uh, well, today's Sunday, which is the first day of the week, if you look at it that way, but it could be seemingly to others the end of the week. But um, probably on Sunday night, last Sunday night or Monday, very, very early in the week, the Lord said this to me, uh, a powerful statement. He says, son, I want to release an anointing through your voice from my own power to destroy roots of bitterness. Wow. I said, this, Lord, I've never spoken this title of a topic in all my life in ministry. I've never. But I see the need for it. So I added something on the title called personal deliverance because that's what it is. And I'm going to share some visions I had, some testimonies of my travels around the world from where? From Paris, France to... Nairobi, Kenya, to Brazil, to hmm, many cities in Brazil. I can't even name the one city. I think I did seven or eight cities when I was in Brazil. Australia, um, Malaysia, Singapore, many, many parts of the world, across Europe. England, yeah, some of it there, but I don't remember it being quite like this, but I tell you, I have a story to tell about Paris, France, and about Nairobi, Kenya. Now, yesterday, uh, I had an amazing, very, very tiring day because so much virtue came out of me in the meeting. It was kind of spontaneous. Uh, it wasn't planned long ahead. In fact, I only knew I was going to go speak in the conference, uh, uh, to be in the conference uh, the day before, the evening before. And we did it at the, at the Great Expo Center. Oh, my God. And uh, when they gave me the microphone, which is a dangerous thing to do, the power of God hit the place, and people were touched. And I had a vision why, while I was there. I'll get into that. So, Father, thank you for your truth, your word, your principles. And uh, let, let me teach today some things that I think a lot of people in the church have forgotten. There's a great scripture that says, the root of bitterness is a defiler, it's a, it's a detractor, it's a devastating, it's a destructive thing. And the scripture also says that bitter water and sweet shouldn't flow from the same fountainhead. So that means God has work to do in all of us to help us. And then I was reminded this morning when Jesus said, my joy and my peace I give to you. I give you my peace, not as the world gives because the world doesn't have it to give. They don't have peace to give us either. He said, he said it's a gift from me. It's a gift. I thought, I take the gift. Let's walk in that. And I found this picture, a meme that I had from years ago. It popped up in my archives and my photos. I thought, hmm, smile and be happy. I know it's not that simple, but that sure is a step in the right direction. <laughs> I'm a very astute and learned man. I know there's a lot of complexities to life, so I'm not oversimplifying it. But something like that is a good statement to make. It's a good image to look at. It's a step in the right direction. Smile and be happy. Whoa, can I? <laughs> I'm going to go faster. I, I read this scripture in uh, 2 Chronicles 20. Of course, we know they rose early in the morning, went out into the wilderness of Tekoa, verse 20, 
2 Chronicles 20, 20. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat cried out aloud and said, Hear, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of, of, um, of Jerusalem. Now, I say this to everybody. It's not just Judah and Jerusalem. It's uh, Africa, Europe, America, Asia, Canada, Mexico, Central America, South America, the islands of the sea, the Far East, Japan, China, India, Russia, uh, all across the world, you know. This is the word of the Lord. He said, believe in the Lord your God and you'll be established. But now also believe his prophets and you shall prosper. If you really want to prosper, you need to get some personal deliverance. Say amen. You, you need this thing. I feel the anointing. And, I, and we're going to do other meetings. The Lord showed me a vision yesterday. I'll share that in a few moments. I, I, ha, I had an open vision while I was praying for these business people at the end of the meeting. I'm telling you, God's presence fell and changed the whole order of the meeting. And the, uh, they had several speakers, even from inter international speakers online to the big screen in the event. And from America and other... And... Uh, I wasn't there for all of that, but when I came in, you know, I got the last session with a, a great teacher from America. He, he beamed in live from his office. It was like four o'clock in the morning his time. I, I understand that. And uh, it was very good, very good, very good. So they're doing the program. Keep, mind you, this is a business event. This is not a church service. It's not a church conference, but where many of, 98% of us were Christians in there, okay? So... Um, 99 percent. There were two guys that stood up that looked like black, two black sheep in the midst of a thousand white sheep. You can just look and spot them. One, that guy, that gentleman there, and that gentleman there. I was like, ooh, we need to get them saved. But everybody else, when I gave back the microphone after speaking, by the way, it, it, we'll, we'll release it. Um, if not video, video, uh, it was so spontaneous the way it happened. But we have it recorded on audio, and I'll, th I'll do some photos overlay to make it a YouTube video. You need to hear what the Lord said. And the presence of God filled the place so strong. I'm telling you, the, 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 the apostle took the microphone. He's from South Africa. And he said, the presence of God is here. The anointing is here. Like it came. <laughs> the Lord came with me. You know what I mean? And it was released in the place. It, it didn't happen before. It wasn't the program. It wasn't that kind of meeting. It was a business seminar. Business seminar. Not church. There was no music. There was no anything. It was all just presentations of teachings and presentations about uh, business and marketing and how to become a millionaire. You know, this kind of thing. Which is brilliant, yeah. And... Um, there's an anointing on that, by the way. There's, a, there's God's anointing is on those, on those things. So, as well as everything else in the gospel, his anointing is on that. Now, so he called everybody to the front to come get on their knees for prayer. I was astounded. I was amazed. I was standing there like, wow. And God's presence was so strong. I feel that same anointing here right now. That God is going to touch you. And the declarations I made, I want to release because it was a different setting. It was a different flow. And I want to release that. Anyway, there's so much that God is saying about personal deliverance, personal empowerment, empowerment for business people. I want to tell you somewhere where God is right now. He's in the business community. He wants to raise up business people. I'm telling you, I feel at home there. I feel alive there. Because also you're in the midst of brilliant people that want to succeed. They come in with their gifts and talents and, and desire to succeed and wanting to learn. But they also come in with the spiritual luggage of yesterday's seasons. They also come in with what we would call baggage, spiritual baggage that needs to be ripped out and thrown away. I looked at certain people. I saw abuse and scars. In the spirit, I turned my head and I scanned the crowd. I saw... I saw... Um, Sickness and disease, and I dealt with it. I, I released a fire for healing while I was speaking. This is a business seminar. Can you imagine? And I saw like woundedness, and I saw people that were stuck, and I saw demons that were following people. This, ha this all happened yesterday. I'm amazed at this, you know. 
I, I can't say this happens in every church. Some churches you get to, you have limited time. You've traveled all the way there. I go there to speak. I'm going to release the word and do what I can, and we got to go to the next event or whatever. It's not like that. But this one, we had free course. Why? Because we had good men hosting it. And many countries opened to us there. Many countries. I don't want to talk all about that right now. Many open doors from great leaders that will host me in other nations and other great cities that I've known I was to go to. This is really a divine connection. We're having meetings this week with several key leaders just based off of what happened yesterday, the overflow from this outpouring. I went outside. There were other people renting other parts of the expo center, and I met them, and they were divine connections. And I put a, a post of one young man, who, who a brilliant young entrepreneur that I met. He was not in our meeting. He was there planning for another meeting that he's having next week. And guess what? Because the Lord said to me, say hi to them. I just said hi to them. He ended up buying my book and he's invited me to be a speaker in his event next week <laughs> at the same place. And that was not related with the event I was in. It was in another part of the building. You see, so what's great about there? It was a place where people are coming to excel and exceed and succeed. And this is where God is at. But there are demonic forces that are keeping people back from God's best. And I want to deal with that today. I was just reminded this morning, for a good hour or two, I was clicking it on and off because I was busy preparing some things, but I, I, I kept looking at it and I was hearing all these scriptures about, you know, the love of God. Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. John 13. Um, trying to remember where, what, what, what verse is that? 32, 33, somewhere in there. Jesus gave us this commandment that we love one another. <clears throat> you know, love never fails. Love always wins. And the root of bitterness is destroying many people's destiny. It's limiting them from God's best. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, deal with this. Break it and crush it and bring it out of people. Some people are walking around with this stuff. I know what it is. Let me tell you, I know what it is. I'll just be, I'll just be uh, open and tell you how this thing can affect someone's life. And then I read, okay, believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. And I, and I, I wanted to read that as a, a preface to this. Turn the page and go to the 22nd verse, 2 Chronicles 20, 22. We all know 2020 so well. Last thing I ever want to do is be, you know, just telling you things you already know. I'm supposed to tell you things I, <laughs> you don't know. When I listen to some people, I'm like, mm, eh, boring. Yeah, I know that. Please tell me something I don't know. I didn't come all the way here and invest my time and energy to not have a greater experience. Yesterday, I'm telling you, was a phenomenon. It was a phenomenon. With, you, know when, you know when you know God is in the midst? When, you deal, when you're dealing with mature, made men, made women, great people that are really full of, uh, you know, they're just full of the gifting of God. One lady sat down and started to talk to me. She said, she want, she's seen me, she's known of me for years. She said, oh, I've seen you everywhere. Oh, my God, it's such a privilege to actually meet you. And she said, let me come and shake your hand. And then after the meeting, she sat down. She just opened her mouth to begin to speak and shared the most brilliant things. I took out, I took out my little recorder, my note taker, and I, I, just, I just put it like this. I said, here, talk. I hold, held it. I recorded what she said. I'm going to go back and listen to it and take, uh, take heed to her wisdom. She said the most amazing things. I said, one thing she said, two or three things. I, I said, say that again. Please repeat that. Say that again. And I was like, wow. In fact, I want to invite her to uh, any, you know, strategy meeting I'm having because she just opens her mouth. It just flows. I, she was telling me about a certain group of people that she's connected with, another ethnicity uh, from Asia, from the Far East, you know, the, of the, <laughs> the big country persuasion, not India, the other one, <laughs> China. <laughs> and she said, these people are wired differently. I thought, it's amazing how they create things. We just began to discuss industries and machinery and things they're wired differently they're wired to succeed they're wired to solve problems they're wired to have success i was doing some study on japan the culture of japan 
Do you know why Japanese, have, some Japanese have become so successful in, in, they're trained from when they're young on culture. They don't have uh, like stupid things taught to them. They're taught about honor and respect and being on time and being diligent and doing your studies and managing time and being respectful of processes and learning and all that. I mean, they're taught that from when they're baby, from when they come out of the womb. You have some people reading a false book, okay, that they call their, their thing, and they're teaching their kids out of this book, which is really from, the, from hell, and uh, yet they, they get indoctrinated to this, and they, there's a few good principles in there maybe, and they live by, and, and they seem to do well. But it's people in the church that are all over the place. And I, I was reminded of uh, many scriptures on this about love. Oh my God, Mark 11, 23 and 24, the power verses. You know, speak to the mountain, it'll be removed. If you doubt not in your heart, but only believe what you say will come to pass. You'll speak to something, it'll go. Mark 11, 23, so powerful. Mark 11, 22, the verse before that says, have the God kind of faith, the Zoe life of God, the God kind of faith. God's kind of faith that he just knows that what he says will produce what he says it will is to produce. And it just happens. Powerful, right? But then go to the next verse. If you have order, order against anybody, uh, it is pray and forgive them. And you know the scripture says if you don't forgive others, then the God, Father in heaven can't forgive you of everything that's wrong with you. Isn't this powerful? Amen or ouch. A lot of amens, a lot of ouches. Take it. Take it like medicine. I'm taking it myself. I'm preaching to myself and everybody else. I'm speaking this out of my spirit. We're going to get this thing right. The game of life to walk in success. Now, next point. I was reminded this morning, a couple hours ago, I was meditating on this. Listen, and I, and I, and I thought about the scriptures that say, you know, um, don't hate your brother lest you're even likened to a murderer. And also, you can't, uh, you know, be finding fault with people. Yeah, you shouldn't be doing that, okay? These cause a, a, the, the, the vine or the tree or the, the branches or whatever of bitterness to work in us. And now our outlook on life and on society, on certain people is bad. I've listened to myself talk in the presence of certain people and I, I air out some grievances that I feel. I'll just tell you straight out. And I'm like, wait a minute. And I, I go to think about that now. This week I've been in prayer. And the Lord's speaking to me about that. I said, no, we got to get that out of us. Say amen. Father, every negative thing that's in your people and in one of your ch children, take it out of them. Take this nonsense out of them. We're called to be lovers. I know it's hard. Sometimes you see someone that's very unlovable and very evil. And can you forgive them and can you love them? Yeah, you can by the grace of God, and you have to. You really have to. So then, next point, I'm going to take it further. The scripture says something so powerful. Whoo, 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 whoo. It says, you know, I put my body under, Paul says. I keep myself in subjection. What does that mean? Your physical things, right? Yeah, but also what you say and what you think and how you feel and your perception and outlook. You have to change that. So your head can think, be mad if someone said, boy, my head would say, I'd like to knock that guy in the head. My head would say, I'd like to do this, but I, it's not right. I feel like this. I'm angry about this. I feel, you know, berated and grieved and despicably disappointed, you know, against Certain things and certain people, the way they are and what they do. But your heart is what? The heart in God, when you get born again, you become a new creature. And now the inside of you, in your spirit, not your head, your mind, your mind needs to be renewed. But your spirit is a well of love, liquid flowing, waterfalls flowing. Current flowing, love, love, love. God is love, and he's down there inside of us. So we need to focus on that again. I haven't heard much teaching on this in the African church, uh, in, in many churches, really. I mean, in the old days in America, the greats used to do whole series on this, like Kenneth Hagin, 
Listen to Kenneth Hagin's teachings. Faith, yes, faith, 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 but he talks about love. He talks about other things. And I'm like, wow. These are things we used to listen to years ago. We used to really believe it. I mean, when I was coming up in the Lord, this is many decades ago, I listened to I was f- filled with all these things. I, I had so much of it, I think, but I think sometimes over time you get away from it. You understand? I know I'm hitting the nail on the head. I know I am. You say amen or not. I know I'm, I'm hitting you straight. I'm hitting you straight. Because I know. People are walking around with all kinds of things. I saw it yesterday. There's a woman, very gifted and talented. I prophesied to her. Here's what I said. Because they asked me to come back up after I spoke. Come and the, when people were kneeling down, come and pray. And you know, if you have words, prophet. They really gave, they gave me the platform. They just gave it to me. It wasn't planned. Amazing. And these are great, great people. This is a very organized event. This is a very high-level thing. In a high-level, beautiful venue, it was really a high top-shelf thing. And they gave, come back. They were so touched by the Lord. Come back, pray. So there's a few, just a few people. I, I really felt like I didn't want to, like, you know, take the, you know, take over the program and take so much time. I'm very, I'm very conscious of that. But I had a word for a few people, and I like one, this one gentleman, this one. And I, and I saw myself, I, what I was doing, I was breaking demonic forces that were behind them. But this one lady, it happened in, in delayed reaction, in delayed effect. I saw her, I said, you know, dear, your, the vision that God has for you, it ties in with a lot of people. A lot of people being involved in your organization, what you do, what you're going to accomplish. I see a lot of blessed people involved with you. She came to me afterwards and said this testimony to me. She says, Prophet, I have never told any human this. What you said to me is in my heart. And God had spoken to me. I have never told anyone. I've never told any man of God. I've never said it out loud to anyone. And I brought the, ho- the host uh, apostle over. I said, come, come listen to this testimony. And, then, and she said, I've never told. She said, exactly what you said is exactly where, what I'm working on. I said, wow. Then she asked for prayer about sickness. Now, I had dealt with that in the, in the flow of the meeting. I'm talking about personal deliverance here today. Healing, getting set free, completely made free from demonic forces that have troubled you even for a long time. Some people have had these things following them for, ge- for, for generations, a generation, for decades, since their childhood. I heard one prophet of God, very greatly used of God, became very well known, uh, Dr. Ed Dufresne. Uh, and he went to be with the Lord back in, I think, 2013, really tragic uh, plane crash, uh, his plane crashed and him and Miles Monroe, I have a hard time with those. But uh, that's how he left us. And, uh, but he was, he was a powerful prophet of God. He said he was confessing, you know, he, he decided to come out in the middle of his conference and say things that have troubled him in his life. And he said things that were following him for 25 years. He was messed up about, but yet greatly used of God and flowing. I thought, wow, this is, see, see, this isn't right. So I saw that last week, and I didn't think about that yesterday, but then I saw this in the spirit happening yesterday, and it made me mad. I have another friend, an evangelist in America, greatly used of God, tremendously blessed, becoming very famous. Uh, God has blessed him enormously with millions and properties and all kinds of things. I won't go all into that. But he, he speaks some powerful things. He said he, he named some experiences along the way of th- pe- preachers that were doing things wrongly, Things that were happening that were just not right. He made a mental note of it. It made him mad. He said, I made a decision that day. One of them when he was only nine years old. Another one when he was a young man coming up in the church, uh, serving his father, who was a great evangelist, who I know them all personally. They're personal friends. Uh, we've interacted a lot. And uh, uh, he said, I got mad and made a decision. I'm going to go. Now, all of these things become vows that you're going to work on. And I saw this again yesterday, and I'm telling you, I felt so stirred up. I feel so stirred up today. We're going to do it. I see this where God's going to have me just dig into someone's life and rip the devil out of them. Lift your hands. Come on now. 
There's no music here. The atmosphere is too quiet for me today. I, I want music. I want worship. I want to hear we can, this, this recording thing, and we're on these social medias, and we've got to think about who's copyrighted what. Lord, help us work this out and get our music thing going. I'm a, by the way, you may not know it, because uh, I don't always flow in it, but I, I am a musical person. I'm a musically gifted person. Before I was saved, I was a rock, I was a lead singer in a rock band. I was a, I, I led, uh, uh, I was a soloist for great men of God. I led the choir. I did a lot of things. I have always been a psalmist, you know. And I got away from it all these years. I don't know. I think maybe there's time to still get back into it. Praise God. I, will, I, I hope so. I, I, I have a it's a fantasy or a desire, or whatever you want to call a dream, that we get back into it and have some great flow of music. So the air is a little bit too quiet for me right now. And I hope everybody's anointed, getting anointed, more anointed. If you're not, then I'm going to knock you in the head. Praise the Lord. No, I'm not. What do I have here? I have a, I have a hairbrush. Can I hit you with this? I have a speaker. What do I have here? I have a glass plaque of Dubai. I don't want to hit you with this. I'd really hurt you. I'm joking around, but I'm saying get anointed. Let's have the, the atmosphere going. So I, I feel like I'm just speaking here, but I wish I was on a platform and there's a keyboard can play and people could shout. I really feel like I, I'm restricted right now. I don't like it. Lord, take us to the, to, the, to the bigger audiences now and let's get out there. Anyway, I'm here in the studio. I have to just... Uh, I could shake everything around, but I can't, I can't walk around physically because I'm right here it's sitting in my chair at my desk. and I'm, ay, ay, ay. Anyway, this thing that I saw behind this woman, she said she had, and the, the, the prophet came over who really uh, spoke of me, and then the host said, people were coming and whispering in his ear, the great prophet is here. You, you don't know that, that man of God. He's come. Wow, he's this and he's that, he's that. And, and, he, and he said, many people have come and whispered in my ear about him. And I had never met him until we were in the meeting. But this other prophet was, he's one of my, uh, he looks up to me a lot, I'll just say that. I don't want to go so far and call him my son, do all that my son, my son business. But uh, he used to play keyboard for me in my events, in my meetings. Then he, 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 I traveled out of the country, and I was gone a long time. And then he uh, started, his, started a church, and he's doing very well. He's a powerful man of God, and he's really developing himself. I saw him. I'm amazed. And we're going to have a strategy meeting this week, too. And, uh, uh, with the, of course, with the other apostle, and we're going to, separately now, we're going to get into a lot of other things for the African continent and the world. But the Lord had me prophesy to him about a great property that God was going to give him. You know, it's so much. And, and leaders from other cities and other nations were there. It was, it was, it was fabulous. Now, he, here's what he said to me. He said, this is the point I'm trying to make. He said, this, this woman is one of his, the pillars in his church. I was like, wow. I respect that. Great. And she told me herself that uh, she said her blood pressure is very high, her blood sugar. She used the D word, D-I-A-B. I said, no, 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 we cancel that. Don't, don't say that word. You're not, you're not going to have that. You're not. If it's there, we're getting rid of it today. And um, in Jesus' mighty name. So, and she said there were... You know, she was grabbing her wrist, like her hand like this, saying like they thought she was having a stroke or something. I said, no, 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 no. So her, her, her pastor now, my friend, one of my, uh, <laughs> from the fruits of my labor, he's been touched and has a great ministry today. There are several like that that are really have great ministries that, you know, came through me uh, over, over time. It's great. So... I'm rejoicing at their success. As successful as they're going to be, I'm happy about it. I want to see it happen. I'm, I'm there. 
I'm like a father. I want to see them shine. I love them. I'm behind them. Amen. I, I want to see them succeed in the greatest ways. And as I see it, I'm happy. Very happy to see it. So, <laughs> so he said, this is one of my great pillars in my church. And she's a great lady. And, and I said, uh, we're dealing with this right now. Then I broke the thing in the spirit. I prayed healing fire over all through her, from her head to her toes, all through her organs. Then I said, now naturally, there's ways you can clean out the arteries and clean the organs and work on that. God's going to give you some help in the nutritional realm. Okay? And uh, I have a little, from the last two Sundays, we did a little thing. We're calling it Health Talk or Keys to Be Healthy or something. I don't know what. And that's another separate video. I extracted them from two Sundays, the last two Sundays, because they were good pieces of thing. I thought, let's make a separate video of this in its own title that people that want that thing can go to that. And uh, somebody wrote me from America, from California last night, uh, yesterday before yesterday, and said, uh, do you have any books on healing that you've written? I said, dear, I really want to. I really want to. I thought about it. I have to get those there because people need healing. And I have so much, uh, so many teachings on that, so much understanding on that. I want to put them together. It's just another thing on the fire to be done on the to-do list that we needed a lot of help in our publishing department and little empire that we're building to, big empire that we're building. Little an empire is not a, is not for, little and empire don't go together. Empire is big, so empire is within the empire. We're going to have the publishing thing that. People can get our writings around the world. A lot of work in that, a lot of help needed. Praise the Lord. If you're out there and you'd like to help God's servant here, me, Thomas Mantha IV, in my production, in media, in book production, television production, financially, financial support, some big donations, some big seed, big tithe, big seed, big offering that will help us in the work that we can build this... Uh, Media thing, bigger, it takes a lot of money, a lot of help, a lot of hands on deck, a lot of workers, it takes a lot of money. You can support the work if you're gifted in that area at all, or if you know someone that would, could be of help. Please write me a private message, and let me give you the phone number, 706-164-191. If you're in Kenya, if you're outside, send me a WhatsApp, plus 254 uh, I'm not going to give emails and the social media things right now. Just let me give you a direct phone number. Send the message. Don't call because I may be in meetings and I won't maybe not be able to take the call. But 24 hours a day, I don't care where you are in the world, time zones don't matter to me at all. You can write a WhatsApp message if you need to SMS. Not as good, but use WhatsApp or SMS. I don't, I like WhatsApp better, but... Do what you got to do and get in touch with me. Plus 254-706-164-191. Let's put that on the screen. And you can contact me that way if you know you'd like to help, you'd like to support the work, or you know you'd like to help in the work, you'd like to volunteer some of your time to help us, you know someone that's really good at these things, I'll take the referral and let's explore it and see if it can go anywhere in God, in God's plan. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Looking forward to hearing from you on that. Whoever it is out there that can assist in these things somehow. So the deliverance factor, right? So there's the healing power of God to flow, right? To destroy that thing. Then there's the nutritional side, which you can help yourself. And then there's the demonic thing. All of a sudden, I saw a vision. And I saw this demon behind the woman. And I said, this tormenting spirit's been following you. It's the cause of all of this oppression. Even probably the cause of the stress that caused the sickness and disease. Or actually... The, the, the thing that actually caused the sickness and disease itself or caused it to, uh, you know, develop into that. It could be physical, but it can also be demonic. 
And I'm telling you right there, her pastor was standing there with his hand on her, a hand in his hand, whatever. He's just receiving too. And I spoke fire against this thing, broke it right there. That woman will never be the same again from yesterday. After that, next, let me move right along. I told the whole story what she said. The prophecy I gave her, she confirmed it. Then a uh, healing prayer. I gave her some nutritional advice a little bit. And then this thing, I saw the demonic realm against her. And that thing was destroyed yesterday. So then after this, this other group of business people came up and asked me to pray for them. And as I'm speaking, I have an open vision. I mentioned that in the beginning. I want to tell it right now. I saw episodes of when God's power fell to deliver people. To the anointing. Not me going, come out, come out. What's your name? And I'm this from here and under the sea and 300 years and... Shut up. No conversations needed. I heard a story about a man. He was in prayer so much, and he just came, and he carried the presence of God so much. Uh, there were pastors around this demon-possessed man. They had him chained up because he was mad. He was like the man at Gadarenes. And uh, he, the pastors thought he was talking to them when he just walked out and said, leave him. That's all he said, softly, leave him. And the pastors took their hands off and backed up. They thought the man of God was talking to them. But really, he was talking to the demons. But the, the pastors, all the pastors there, to their utter amazement, by the time they had even backed up, the man was changed. And he was free. The devils knew this man of God was carrying the glory and meant business. See, the devil, he said, Paul I know and Jesus I know, but he said to the sons of Sceva, who are you? You're playing games. We don't know you. But Paul had power and authority in the spirit. Why? Because, because of his walk with God. And Jesus, of course, was carrying the glory of the Holy Ghost without measure. So Jesus didn't, we don't see in the Bible, only one time he asked his name. He said he's legion for there are many. A legion in that time was 6,826 men in a battalion. 6,000, you'll find it in the footnotes if you study it out. I studied it over the years. 6,826 of them. That means that man could have had 6,826. He said, legion, for we are many. Yeah, maybe 6,000, over 6,800 of them might have been in this one man. And Jesus... He just wanted him to locate and say the name, the, you know, the reference point and what, what they were. That's it. He didn't have any more conversations. Next thing you know, the man is free. Completely free and in his, in his right mind. He was naked, cutting himself, a total madman, lost his mind. Everybody was afraid of him. He even lived in the, the tombs area where they buried people. He was just out gone from society and all of a sudden here he comes Jesus probably told him get him some clothes get him cleaned up fix him up a little bit now he's presentable and he comes back to the Lord and says uh, what do we do can I follow you Jesus said no don't come with me stay here with your people and preach to them tell them what I did for you one person Jesus even told him don't tell anybody what I did for you just go <laughs> the woman at the well, she probably wanted to follow Jesus around too. He said, no, stay here. Or does, it, does it even say what the woman at the well did? John chapter 4, 12. I don't know. If it, historically, there might be some stories about that. Did that woman actually follow him around or she stayed there? I think she became, I think if I can remember right, I think she became kind of an evangelist in her community. So Jesus didn't need everybody. He touched them and left them there. Now, i got to say something. There's people in the marketplace, in the marketplaces, as we'd say, the business community, the business world, even in the government arena, the Lord's been talking to me about, about that, that people need to be raised up, set free, get on fire, fill with the Holy Ghost and fire, and begin to do God's will in those arenas and industries and societies. Can I tell you, when that begins to happen more and more, now you have the touch of the Christian influence and the touch of the Holy Ghost, and it begins to put down the work of the devil. 
I watched a documentary this morning that was appalling. I couldn't believe it. You know, one of the most beautiful cities in the world and one of the seven wonders of the world is Cape Town, South Africa. Table Mountain. They say it's one of the seven wonders of the world. And the place there, the beach, you know, the ocean, water's cold, the weather's kind of funny. It's down at the bottom of the planet. If you keep, you know, it's very far south of the equator. If you keep going further down, you'll be in Antarctica, down there, which is really cold. So the south of the earth is cold and ice. The north of the world, what we call the North Pole, if you go way up north, Norway, top of Europe, north of France, the sun goes down at 11 o'clock at night. Uh, I couldn't believe it. It was 10 o'clock, 10, 15 p.m. It was still daylight. I was like, Did, is the clock wrong? They said, no, no, no. In the summer, the sun doesn't go down here till 11 p.m. Could you imagine? At 6 o'clock, 6.15, 6.30, it's getting dark. 6.30, by 7 o'clock, the sky is black, most everywhere in the world. But up there, 11 o'clock. There's even a part of the world way in the north where the sun is out for six months of the year and it's dark for six months of the year, way in the north of Alaska. So this globe we're on is a very interesting place, to say the least. Why God did all that, I sure don't know. And when I ask him about it, he doesn't tell me. I guess I'll get the answers later. Right now, it's, you know, a, clo a private file. He's not going to explain to me why he made alligators and the cold and the summer and the heat. And, well, I, you know, it's there. Just look at it. It's there. Deal with it. So uh, he, he's, he, I haven't known him to really go on explanations about it all in my walk with him. But he talks to me about everything else. Can you imagine I hear from God every single day? God talks to me all the time. That's why I'm always quick to record. I'm always quick to try to document, make videos that you, you can't remember all this stuff. Some people say make journals and write things down. If you, if you don't always do that, then you need to find a way to record what God is saying. And I'm a stickler on recording. I'm, I'm really known for that. People say this prophet is very serious because he records everything. He's not vague where he says, well, I said this, and then, you know, later on. No, it was recorded and documented and date stamped through computer technology or recording technology. And you can't doctor that. That was made in the system of the machine that records you. So when you document it this day, this second, this moment, this hour, this date, and here's what was said, it's there. But even what I had said to this woman, uh, about many people being involved in her calling, whatever she's doing. She'll tell me more later about it, I guess, because uh, I'll be meeting with the pastor. Anyway, we're all family. And, uh, and that was recorded, and what was said, and then what I prayed after was also recorded. To, for what? To document it for the glory of God. It was a phenomenal miracle to happen. That woman's life will never be the same, and I don't know who could have done that for her. Of course, Jesus and the Holy Ghost himself, but through a ministry who I'm glad I was being used by God in that. And today I want to deal with this, that God's going to take us into deliverance. Things have happened to you that affected you badly. And the Lord spoke to me particularly about the root of bitterness. I received a prophetic word from Archbishop Harrison Nanga a few weeks ago in a conference. I was asked to speak by the host of the meeting in the conference two days before him, Saturday afternoon and Sunday afternoon, and then Archbishop was the last speaker. He came on after me, after I had spoken. And uh, I think there was, one, there was one, or, one or two other preachers in the midst of it too. And uh, very powerful. I did the morning service Sunday morning stayed over the afternoon, and then the Archbishop came in. And, but here's the word he spoke to me on Saturday. He came up to me, and the power of God was so strong. He said this. He said, Dr. Manton, he said, God is giving you a new heart, and he's going to send you to all the great men of the world. The next day, he prophesied over me again. This is what he said. He said, I, 
every time I'm, I'm praying for you, I keep seeing, I keep looking, I see it over and over. I see leaders from around the world connecting with you and linking hand, joining hands with you to help you and to have international flows of ministry from here, Africa, to, America, to the, all the world. And he says they're going to do it. These leaders are going to get involved because they love you. He says they love Thomas Manton. He put his hand on my head like that. And it, 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 the anointing was so strong. And he was even amazed. Like he, he threw his head back a little bit like, wow, this came out of him from the Holy Ghost. You know, we can prophesy and be amazed. Something could come out of us. Like, like what happened in the meeting yesterday when I was speaking. The words were so, everybody was like this. The apostle, the host. Can you, can you imagine? And that doesn't come just for nothing. I mean, God had, to, God had to have shown up himself for that to happen. And that's what we really need. We don't need church, hello. We need the Holy Ghost. And we need deliverance from everything that's held us. Whatever's blocking our way, there's something that God has always devised and designed a way for that thing to be destroyed. And the way it really happens is by his grace, his power, and his anointing. Lift your hands and receive right now. Father, thank you for the touch of fire. To be, I, I speak it's being released across the airwaves, across wherever the person is that connects with this message or hears me, that you will deliver them from every sickness, every derangement of mind and thinking, every bitterness in the heart, from per horrible experiences, which are legitimate grievances, legitimate gripes, legitimate things that have been done. People can have a right to say what they want when they've had experiences, but really it's not edifying. It doesn't help. You know, the Bible says, again, the root of bitterness is a defiler. A defiler. It's a destroyer. It's not a helper. It doesn't help you. And the scripture says, get, a, get control of yourself. Then Galatians 5, Paul talked about the fruits of the Spirit. Long-suffering, you know, love, patience, you know, <laughs> graciousness. Where, and then the scripture says, and I was reminded of this this morning, as I was saying, I was, I was, I was meditating, I was hearing the scripture. Be tender-hearted and kind to one another. Woo! Are you kidding? No, not kidding. Was God kidding? Was the Lord kidding when he said that through the apostles? Be loving and tender-hearted one toward another. Then, this, he also said, Paul also said, speak what is edifying to the hearer. Wow. I know I've failed on that <laughs> one too many times. <laughs> and I repent again. <laughs> Let's repent. You know, you, you, you've done things to block your own progress because you've been hurt. You've been wounded. You've been damaged. Did Jesus co come for everybody? He said, this, the physician doesn't come to the well. He comes to the sick. People that have been damaged by life, by things that have happened. You know, they've, they, bad things have happened to good people. I said, I was preaching on this last, last week, that many of the afflictions of the righteous, the Lord said. Watch that message from last Sunday. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the, the Lord delivers us out of them all. What's the title? The God of Miracles. The God of Miracles are... Deliverer and our provider. I wish I had room in the title of the message because you know you limit it to a hundred characters on the YouTube title to put the whole scripture. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Maybe I can go back if I have any room. I don't know if I do. I could put Psalm 34 and the verse just in brackets as a reference for people to read because that was what the Holy Spirit said. But when I thought about the title, we're really talking about God himself. Who is he? He's, he's the God of the miraculous. He's the God who makes us free. Jesus said, you'll know the truth, John 8, 32. And the truth will make you free. Then the scripture says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. But being set free is different than being made free. You ever hear people misquote that? You'll know the truth, and the truth will set you free. I can't tell you how many times I've heard preachers say that from the microphone. And I want to stand up and say, sir, it says make you free. Made, you're made free. You're made into something you weren't before. God wants to do that in us. So 
If you have ought with somebody else, what's their scriptural remedy? Let overcome, let, let love overcome the evil. Overcome evil with good. Oh my God. Pray for those who abuse you and use you. Pray for them. Be tender hearted, little children, one toward another. Love one another. The love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, Romans 5 5 says again. Wow. Well, let me, uh, let me do 22. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22. Now they began to sing and praise the Lord. No, yeah. Now they began to sing and to praise. Now, now, excuse me, now when, now when. Now, I want to pause. Now, when they began to sing and to praise, when they did that, I had to read it three times to get it, slow down and get it in the right steps to make it say what it says. Say what it was. Now, pause, when they began to sing and to praise, comma, the Lord set ambushments against their enemies. And I thought of this. How can you praise God if you're not feeling happy? That's why I put that, that thing on my social media. Smile and be happy. And know that the peace and the joy of, of the Lord, the joy of the Lord, Nehemiah 8.10, says, is our strength. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Nehemiah 8.10. And also in Psalm 126, let's look at that. I'm not going to turn here in it physically, but uh, Psalm 126. Maybe I should turn there. Ah, let me just say what I can. Do. I just want to paraphrase a little bit from the But the story is, you can read it for yourself. Psalm 126. Basically, go down a couple of verses. It says, how can we praise the Lord in a strange land being oppressed? You see that? When things are against you and your heart is filled even with bitterness and you've been damaged, it's really hard to walk free and be happy. Like the old song, Don't Worry, Be Happy. Here's a little song I wrote. I'll sing it note for note. Don't worry, be happy. How? Now there's a way you fake it till you make it. You say... I'm going to smile and act happy even though I'm feeling bad. I'm going to, by faith, take on the joy of the Lord and the peace of God that Jesus said in John. And it's the words written and read by Jesus himself, my peace I give you, my peace I leave with you. The world can't give it, but the world can't take it away if you don't let them. Dr. Jerry Savelle wrote a great book. It says, if Satan can't steal your joy, he can't steal your goods. If Satan cannot steal your joy, he cannot steal your goods or your things. It's true. So you see the damage that the devil does by causing you to be bitter, in pain, grieved, wounded, damaged. You have a grievance. You talk to people. It comes out. Out of the abundance of the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks like what? It rises up in you because there's something in there that needs to come out. I prophesied today by the Holy Ghost. The Lord spoke to me many days ago to speak this today on Sunday. I prophesied by the Holy Ghost right here, right now, that God is ripping the root of bitterness out of you. And you'll be free from today. Like the anointed archbishop prophesied over me. God's giving you a new heart. That means many things. I had people, you know, get insights and revelations. We were having a conversation. People were amazed at the word. They were amazed at what was said. They were like, wow, that means, prophet, God's given you a greater realm of stature and authority. I said, good. And then it means you need the, the, a great capacity from within to handle, the, to, to move in the big things, the big doors, the huge things that God's going to take you into. And he's taking me there, taking me to them. 
huge doors. I mean, world leaders, world shakers, influencers of the world were going to be on their platforms. I have been on some, but we're going to many more. The, the apostle, my apostle, spoke it. Surely it's going to happen. And it's happening already. Just yesterday, many connections from many countries. The other a few, a few days ago, last week, we had two leaders events, two to, Monday morning and Tuesday morning. <clears throat> very early, in two, two, five-star hotels very close to each other. One over there, one over there. Different events, and we were with the great leaders. Great doors, huge, too much to handle. Too many to process, but we're going we're gonna to do as many as we can by the grace of God. By the, and by the Lord's direction. A new heart I give you, and I'll send you to all the great men of the world. Whew. You know, when he prophesies, uh, Archbishop, he doesn't speak lengthy words like I do. Because I'm in the office of the prophet. I'll, I'll lay it out. I'll give you the whole narrative. You know, the whole long thing. He'll just speak like a one sentence. I remember one time, I said, I said, we were upstairs in the office and I know he was going to go down and preach and he was getting ready to do that, rushed out. We went down together and I just, as we were walking, I just put it in his ear. I said, uh, Archbishop, I said, make sure you lay your hands on me before you leave here today. He went like this, yes. So I followed him out to the car after he left the pulpit. He went right to his Mercedes. He got this new custom, cute Mercedes, really amazing car. Sat in there. And uh, oh, was he in his Range Rover that day? I can't remember what, what one of the two beautiful vehicles he has. And uh, he, anyway, he got in the car and he looked at me and he said, oh, he remembered. And he stretched his hand out and he just said, let the land kiss you with favor. Wah! That's it. Boom. The purr God hit me so strong. We, we came, that was in the morning. In the afternoon, and then I came by uh, the house. Somebody listening to me here, you know what I'm talking about. And that was the day I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak. Never did preach. I was, I was going to preach another, another meeting. I couldn't, I couldn't speak. I was so filled with the glory, I couldn't speak. It's like my whole system was short-circuited by, by the anointing. It's like I was slain in the spirit, but I was sitting up. And I never did. I thought, nah, we just had some food, sat there a long time. And then after a while, I thought, you know what? I'm not going to do a message now. I can't do it. I was so caught up in the power of God just from one word like that. And, you know, I tell you, these things come to pass. They manifest everywhere we're going. It's people run to talk to me and connect. The favor, the whole land, the whole, the whole world is open, open to us. Now, this process, I want to say this, this process of God processing you to bring you into a realm of maturity, high stature, like Luke 2.52. Let's look at that. Jesus grew in, in wisdom and stature and then grew in favor with God and man. First was the process of him rising up. Now, Ephesians 4.11, what did Paul say? 4.10 uh, 4, to 15 or whatever, 14. He says... Uh, Ephesians 4, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 10 to 14. The whole narrative there is great. But in the midst of that, it says that we be raised up into the fullness of the stature of Christ. He gave some apostles, 11. He led captivity captive, brought them out, 10. 11, he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, pastors, and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, for the perfecting of the saints, that we all grow up into the stature of Christ and be no more like children, spiritually. 1 Corinthians 12, 1, Paul said, I, will not have you, I would not have you ignorant, brethren, about what? The manifestations, pneumaticos is the Greek word, P-N-E-U-M-A-T-I-K-O-S. The Greek word pneumatikos, pneuma is spirit, P-N-E-U-M-A. Tikos is like T-I-K-O-S in Greek, the manifestation of the part before it, the manifestations of the spirit. 
We call them the gifts of the Spirit, 1 Corinthians 12. But really it's the manifestations of the Spirit. He said the Holy Spirit, you have, wherewithal having the, the Holy Spirit himself. And what is the best gift? The Bible says covet earnestly the best gift. I want to ask the question, what is the best gift? The one that's needed at the time. And I want to tell you by the Holy Ghost, there's a lot of people that need deliverance from things. And God's going to give it to you on this day. You can't, he, he spoke this principle to me and I wrote it in one of my books. I think it's in this one somewhere. Prophetic Keys to Successful Living. You can get a hold of this book. We'll tell you how. We'll have a little announcement about this on the screen. He said, you can't run fast into your tomorrow carrying yesterday's spiritual luggage or baggage. He said to me, and I wrote it down, you can't run fast with balls and chains around your ankles. The balls and chains around your ankles are what? Oppressions, scars, woundedness, damage, things you've kept in yourself. I heard a great man of God doing a teaching. He says, you know, when he was young, he, tell, he tells a lot of stories. It was really amusing. And he said, he used to have like a chip on his shoulder. He was real angry. He was very sick, but he got himself healed. Uh, I'll tell you who it is. It's Dr. Kenneth E. Hagen, the great apostle of faith. He was telling the story on himself. So when he was young... He used to, he wouldn't say anything, but if someone did it wrong or said something bad to him, he would make a mental note of it and not talk to him again. He kept that thing. But now he got the revelation about being a lover, a forgiver. Anyone that's done aught to you, you don't do it back to them. And he was telling testimonies. He told the testimony of this preacher that did him wrong. He was a very bad guy. And uh, he had him come preach in his church and raised offerings for him. To do what? To punch the devil out. To say, I'm not going to allow any bitterness in me. You know, it's not easy all the time. You know, most people say, I know from my own experience. I'm, I'll tell on myself. <coughs> you have bad experiences and you'll go around and you'll repeat them to other people. I'm telling you from today, this week, I've been in prayer. That, that season is over. I'm free from that. I won't do it again. If I do, I'm going to try to catch myself and grab myself by the shirt and say, hey, control yourself. Don't talk about that. If someone asks me a question, you want to know about the reality of some things, I may tell you in the realm of truth, but I don't want to feel any pain about it. I want to just tell you the facts. Just the facts, like in a, in a advocacy kind of uh, counsel realm, but not in the realm of it's my experience, and I'm mad about this. You got to get past that. But let me tell you something, man. It was bad what they did. Oh, yeah. It was not right what people have done. Oh, right. Criminals are not okay. You know, there's a principle that says God is far. It's in the scripture. The Lord is far from the wicked. Lift your hands. The Lord is far from the wicked. He's not their friend. He's not their lover. They don't belong to him. He's not in favor of them or their life or their ways. Look at people that curse God and die, died. Look at uh, uh, the, the one from the Beatles who was shot dead because it still rang on his life that he said Christianity is going to decrease, but we're great and we're even more popular than Jesus. He said that statement. He tried to retract it later, but they said the damage was done and He'd already said it, and then he got killed one day, and he, he wasn't following the Lord, you know. And then Billy Graham preached to the great uh, famous actress in America, Marilyn Monroe. And he went, he felt led of the Lord to go to her and preach to her and say the words that God told him to say. And she mocked at him and said, I don't need your Jesus. A few days later, she was found dead. They ruled it a suicide, but many thought she was murdered because she had some intel on some big figures. You might know about that. Uh, and I've heard the documentaries and the stories, and I would tend to almost believe that it wasn't uh, by her own hand that she died. However, they put the pills there. Maybe they found a way to inject her with something or what. I don't know. But sure enough, she was dead just a few days 
after she says, I don't need your Jesus. You need to be very careful. God didn't just stand in the way and leave them alive. Why they died like that, I don't know. I know there's, there's a devil in the world. There's evil in the world. I started to say this. Uh, so I covered this. I wanted to really cover this. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 22, that says, because they had heard the prophet, they had gone out, they were praying, they were listening to Jehoshaphat's leader, they were walking under Jehoshaphat's leadership. They were listening to counsel. They were listening to a good, uh, an, an anointed man of God. They were into, they were in the flow, and they began to worship and praise, and then God set ambushments against their enemies. Some ambushments you need to see happen against your enemies can't happen until your heart gets regulated. I mean, let me say it in a better way. Let me say it in a better way. By the way, I met a lady named, yesterday named Better. Her name is Better. I said, spell that, please. I thought it might have been Betty, Better, B-T-A, E-T-A, B-E-T-T-E-R. And I didn't get to say it then, but if I see it, when I see her again, I'll tell her, boy, your mama was a special kind of lady to name you that. My daughter's name is Better. Better than what? Better than other people. <laughs> Maybe better than the last one. Better than the last round. Praise the Lord. I could say a lot of things. Ho, ho, ho. And she's in the well, she's in the the flower industry, businesswoman. Wow, we met great people yesterday. So, um, I want to say it in a better way. Skipping past sister better, sister better. Her name is better. Imagine. When you work on yourself and let the Lord work on you to get you delivered from all this nonsense, then you'll have new favor. There's a promise of favor that comes for the man, the man that gets married. Proverbs 8, 20, 8, 8, 18, 22. When a man finds a wife, not a knife. When a man finds a wife, not strife. When a man finds a wife, he obtains a better life. And like, like new angels of favor, new things begin to be released for that person. I've seen, I saw two guys that I know, men of God that I've known for years. And today they're walking in greater things because they got hooked up with the, the right person. And both of them, it's not their first relationship. One ended in divorce, and I knew the former wife. And one ended up, the wife died, and I knew the former wife. They were in my meetings years ago. You see her sitting in the front row in my video from a message we did years ago. Big uh, auditorium, huge, huge venue. Great meeting. Now, he married another woman, and he, he just built his own, everything just opened to him. It's like his life is flourishing in a new way. But it wasn't before that. He was kind of, you know, here, but now he went. To, so there's ways that God, I, I, without getting too much on that point, but God, God, can, there's God, God has ways to elevate your life, but you need to get free. Can you say a big amen to that? You have to get free. From all these things that beset you, the, the little foxes that spoil the vine, the sin that so easily besets you. The sin that so easily besets you could even be something left in your heart that you let it tie to your tongue and come out and be spoken. I've had it happen to me. I've already apologized to God, apologized to myself, for myself and to myself and to God about that. And the underscore, an underscore is the thing you put at the bottom of the line and it's blank on top. So you can add all the adjectives. I won't say any bad words. I'm not going to do it. The underscore quotations 
whatever you want to fill in the blank of what those people are that have done such horrifically evil things, we have to let it be washed away. Like the old saying says, like water off a duck's back. The duck's feathers have some kind of coating on them naturally from God, from God's own creation. And when the water comes down, it like it beads into round globules of water and just rolls off. It doesn't sink in. They don't get wet. That's how they're able to go in the water and move. They can get out, maybe shake it off a little bit. But the water doesn't penetrate the feathers. There's some kind of oil or coating that comes naturally from them, the way God made them. Like water off a duck's back. You ever heard that saying? You can look at a duck, and it just came out of the water, but it won't look wet. It's not like soaked through, because the, their, their feathers or their hair on them has some kind of coating that lets the water roll up. You have to be like that with the things of evil. Yes, it was bad what they did. Yes, it was criminal. Yes, they are, also have to pay the price and the consequences. The wages of sin is death. The evildoer gets judged. You know, Exodus 22 uh, talks about what God thinks about a thief. And there's some things there that maybe we can't do today by uh, New Testament reality or civil laws of society. But the, the, the retribution to a thief, what God thinks about a thief, you find it in Exodus 22. Now, someone could have been stolen from, and I know about that. The evildoer is guilty of that, and they have to pay that. But guess what? It cannot have, that experience cannot have residence in me. I need to be delivered from that. And the Lord said, I will work to destroy every root of bitterness that has defiled you, my precious chosen servants, my precious chosen sons and daughters. You may think, I'm okay. I have a good outlook on life. I control myself. Hey, look, don't give me this self-righteous, pious stuff like you're all that and a bag of chips. You, you, you have issues. Everyone has issues. I, I, I come to understand this greater in, in, in the latter times now. Everybody has issues. Everybody has an issue or some issue that God wants to work on. Dr. Mike Murdoch, my dear friend and mentor for a long time. Uh, we've been friends over 30 years, over more than 30 years. And he's spoken a lot of wisdom into my life, a lot of counsel, a lot of prophetic words, a lot of prayers, a lot of things. We've spent a lot of time, many hours together, many, many hours together over the years. Many. Dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens, maybe hundreds of hours together. Yeah. He had me be uh, one of the main speakers in all his conferences. Speaking in all his conferences a whole year. I think he had four conferences at the Wisdom Center. I... He had me speak in all of them. And we spent a lot of time together. One time, uh, he was very busy and he was very tired, I know. And he had been through a few challenges and, uh, you know, his physical energy maybe wasn't up too great. Too great but he, he, he wanted to uh, see me and I sowed a certain seed, you know. And he... And he Invited me in spontaneously. I just waited. Everybody else was leaving after a certain point, after we had dinner in the VIP boardroom, his boardroom. After the event, after the service, the speakers were invited to the boardroom, which is a high privilege. Not everybody can come there. Just us. Sumptuous food, great fellowship, picture taking, conversation, networking, connection making, fellowship. It was just brilliant. I mean, those times were just so great. And some people had already dashed, you know, and there were a few left. And I waited because he was still in the building. He was in the other room. He was talking to people. I said, no, I'm not leaving till he's. Sure enough, here comes this man. Dr. Manthin, come quickly. Come, come. I jumped up, grabbed my briefcase, finished my uh, coffee, whatever it was. And went, and he, Dr. Murdoch, he told me, sit down. He held on to my arm and he grabbed my arm, he held my arm like this tight, like this with his hand from over here. How could I do it? 
for 55 minutes. Five, five. 55 minutes. And did not let go of my own the whole time. And spoke to me things. Was that worth waiting for? <laughs> Absolutely. blessed Absolutely. Trillion percent. And the things he told me, oh my God. But the realm of uh, persevering and, and moving in the presence of God and letting God, you know, process you and refine you and make you. And I remember one time, Many years ago, not like this time I'm talking about. It was like probably 2018, 2019 that I was there with him there at the Wisdom Center. I think it was 2019, 2018, 2019, both both years. And uh, but many many years back, back in the 90s, I think it was. And he said, "Son, you know he talks. Son, you are becoming." He said, stay with the process. Don't be weary in well-doing because God's taking you places. You're going there. He sp would speak things like that to me. His father, J.E. Murdoch, who lived to 99 years old, he died a few years back, went to heaven. Righteous, great man of God, holy man of God. He was an intercessor. And he used to grab me and pray for me all the time. Every time I'd see him, I'd ask him to pray for me. He'd lay hands on me and pray for me. These are precious things. I mean, he's put something in you. But sometimes, even the experiences of life take you away from that center point of greatness. Like, like I was speaking about, I was meditating on all these scriptures. Be tender-hearted one toward another. God gives the command as his disciples have loved one toward another. Jesus even said also in John 16, I believe it is somewhere, they'll know that you're my disciples because you have loved one for another. Romans 5.5, 5, the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. On and on and on. Don't have aught with anybody. Forgive everybody so your Father in heaven can forgive you. These are things we do to have more of God resident in us. Self-analysis. I looked at myself yesterday after God's presence filled the place and I carried the glory in the place and spoke the words of the Lord over the people. It was so powerful. And I just Anna took a self-analysis afterwards. I thought, you know what? Last night I was thinking about it. That was a phenomenon. I said, I'm, 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 I'm. I'm somewhere. I wasn't always there. I wasn't always where I am now. And believe me, we, we're walking in revival for decades. We're walking, the power of God's been moving through us for decades. You understand? But God takes us on a journey that brings us to higher levels. Uh, three weeks ago, I did a message on Sunday. And Tidy, you need to go back and watch this again. 55 realities that come with spiritual maturity. And I mentioned many of them, but I want to do a part two of that to go through the 55 points that I wrote down that the Lord was talking to me all day. We were driving around different places. I went to some office in West Side over there and back and around. Hey, and God was talking to me the whole time. People around, they didn't know I was having that conversation. I didn't tell anybody. I didn't say a word. I was hearing things from, I, the Lord was speaking to me the whole day and I was writing things. I wrote 55 things about the realms of spiritual maturity. What is it again Luke 2.52 says? What is it again that Luke 2.52 says? Jesus grew in stature. I want to say this, Zechariah 3, and then wisdom, and then with favor in God and man. Luke 2.52. The attributes of the Holy Ghost moving 
to give us power and riches and wisdom and, and strength and glory, honor, and blessing for the purpose of us taking dominion. We find that in Revelation 5.12. We can look at that. But I want to go back to Zechariah, something I preached from years ago that I was reminded of last, in the last month or a few weeks. And I hadn't thought about this in a f- some years. But this scripture from Zechariah chapter 3 talked about the story of Joshua, the high priest, whichever Joshua that was. And he had filthy garments on. He'd been through some things that's symbolic spiritually of the natural. Defiled garments or dirty garments, filthy garments, the Bible said. And the angel came, put new garments on him, and put a new turban on his head. They used to wrap their head, maybe because of the dust, the sand, the sun out in the, where they were. Not religious, not a religious turban. Maybe it was just a natural thing to wrap their head. I lean more toward that. There are other people that wrap their heads, and they're, it's a religious uh, symbolism to it. But I'm sure then it wasn't just about that. Although maybe the high priest had his own... style, color, fabric, accoutrements, embroideries, accessories, and the turban. So what, but in that setting, the angel came and put all these clean garments on him. And then the Bible talks about the wall being filled with eyes, which means prophetic. The prophetic glory was released. There was another level of God, Jesus, that came through when summer was fully processed. And I'm telling you, this personal deliverance thing is part of it. If you have bitterness in you, you have sadness in you, you're wounded, you have grievances in your heart, you have to let those go. I don't care who did what. I've had things done to me I wouldn't wish upon an enemy, maybe. Definitely not on, upon a friend. If I were to tell the stories, and I could tell stories. In fact, whatever time of day it is right now, I tell you, we could be here, uh, the sun can go, it's afternoon, the sun can go down and the sun can come up again in the morning and I'd still be talking, just on experiences. It's like, I think my life is like one of the James Bond movies. The, the, the scenarios of criminality and evil and attacks and persecution and th- blah, 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 details, I mean, uh, orchestrated attacks from Satan and his ugly friends. Horrific things, criminal things. And it affects you. Naturally speaking, but guess what? In the destiny of God, we have no room for that inside of our temple. Prayer again. I wish I had a special psalmist here or a minstrel to play. But I'm... In a quiet place in the studio. Too quiet for my taste today, but I was listening to some old songs that I really liked before I came on. This was really stirring me up. Boy, I want to jump into that musical realm again. We're going to do it. I'm seeing it, I'm feeling it. In our own building, in our own center, beautiful worship. We'll have banquets with the greatest food. We'll have seminars. We'll have conferences. The Lord has spoken to me certain titles of conferences. One, again, as I was saying, I had an open vision about yesterday, about this thing of personal deliverance. And I'm going to get to the couple of testimonies of international exploits, adventures in God, where the power of God really flowed. And I'll, I'll share those briefly. But I want to tell you, prayer time right now. Let's pray. Father, I know it's, a sovereign act of your miraculous power. We've been talking about you and me together. The God, you are the God of miracles. This is a miraculous thing for you to bring deliverance to somebody. And I know everybody needs it. The next season, it's, you know, I hate to say this because it sounds like a negative confession. And I don't want to say it in that, in that way, but I'll say it like this. Some things are restrained from you until you get processed enough. Even Esther had to dip in one kind of oils and ointments and scents and perfumes for six months and another for another season. Many months, up to a year, I think historically we see. 
and the Chamberlains were giving her the protocol lessons on how to deal, how to walk in the palace, how to talk to the king or not talk to him, how to understand things, before she actually had that appointment. What's symbolic about that? That God is also processing us, his people, before he takes us to certain dimensions. Kenneth Hagin said something so powerful, I was listening to him again. He said, you can't pastor a big church very well unless you've pastored a small church. I know. You, you, can't, you can't do, you, you, people just want to jump to the bigger things. You can't jump to the big things before you do the small things. Anybody that's become great will tell the stories and the testimonies, and I have many of my own. Again, I could talk for hours, testimony. I won't do it now. But uh, about testimony, one day I'll share some of them. I'll, I did share some of these stories more. Things that we did came up through, little things, you know. Don't despise a day of small beginnings, a scripture I don't need to be reminded of. That you want to tell me, Job 8, 7, don't be, you know, despise the day of small beginnings, or so great will be your latter end. I know that verse over and over. It doesn't bless me to hear it, except the second part. So great will be your latter end. But we know about the other part. We've, we've, we've gone through that already. I don't need to be reminded of that. But he talked about these men that thought they needed big things and they, they crashed. They didn't even, it didn't even work out. He said they never really achieved anything with their life. They never did anything. And they're going to have to account to God when they die, when they get bef to stand before him, of what they did and how they mishandled and mismanaged and didn't flow in the call of God upon their life. You know, the call of God is upon my life in a huge way. There's huge things that we have to accomplish yet. I know that. Thus, you understand the warfare that comes. The devil's not scared of your past or who you are today. He's scared of what's coming. And he devises all these little things to try to block the way. But I'm telling you, the Lord is the destroyer of them all. Again, like the psalmist said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, the Lord delivers them, us out of them all. The Lord delivers us out of them all. The scripture says, though a man, the righteous, can stumble seven times, yet he should just get up and keep moving. Get up the eighth time, the ninth time, the tenth time. Keep moving. God is the God of a second chance. I, he is, and the third and the fourth. By his mercy. Listen here. I thought of this scripture. I think it's in the book of Job. We can find it later. I'm not going to take time to belabor to look for it right now. If anybody has it, you can send it to me. But there's hope for a tree if it was cut. Because it can sprout and grow again. I thought, yeah. A lot of people have experienced that. So many attacks. So many issues. So many problems. Sc uh, circumvented them from other things. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Surrounded their life. Came into their world to try to block. Really, the devil was just trying to block the way of the next thing, the bigger thing. But that devil is stupid. He's ugly. He's defeated. We're victorious in Jesus' name. Let me tell you something here. I don't have any sad stories to tell about uh, 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 warfare and the devil. What, whatever he tried to do, he took his best shot and he didn't win. He'll never win. He's under our feet. Greater is he. Here's the inside information I could say I have. Like Brother Hagen would say. I have some inside information I want to tell you. And they, they got scared and went, ooh, this man knows something. Ooh, he knows something about the outcome of this. We better, you know, we better be scared of that. And take reverence uh, toward that. He said, let me, he, he laughed, he told the people when he was preaching, he said, he said, let me tell you what the inside information is that I had. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in you. <laughs> Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I have the victory over this. It's like, it looks like a complex situation going on here. But, but, I, but we already have the victory. Can you say amen? Even by our faith. And I love some stories he was telling about conflicts with people 
ornery people, evil things done, said, done, offenses, wrong actions, horrible things. And he said he overcame every one of them with the love of God. We have to do that. Lift your hands, say, Lord, your love conquers all. And I, I'm going to walk in your love. And that's our call according to the word, to walk in your love. And the anointing is going to come and manifest behind this word. Again, I'm not on a platform with people shouting. I wish I was. I almost seeing the vision like I'm carried away, like I'm there. Like my desire, I'd like to be in that. You have some music playing. We're in this thing. Come to the altar. Boom. The anointing is flowing. But I'm just sitting here in front of this camera here. You know, I'm getting, feeling caged. I'm feeling cagey right now. I'm feeling <laughs> like I'm, I want to jump out of it and run everywhere. Shakom, bam, ba, kela, shakate, hey. I can't even put on no music because then these, you don't know if these social medias are going to try to say it's somebody's music. Can we figure that out and get some instrumental music that I can put on? I need that. Somebody can, can someone do that for me and give me something that I could just hit a button and put on something that just uh, some nice instrumental music that we know is not uh, going to be in this infringement of someone writing me and saying, you know, the video is, 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 is not okay because I don't want to do that to this teaching right now or else I would reach for it right now. But we need some things that are already prepared. Don't come up in this work and be lazy. You know, I say something, do it. Give it to me. Be a problem solver. There are need, things are needed. We don't just say things for them. Just oh, I'm just saying something. It doesn't mean anything. It does it? Does means a lot. Silence in heaven for half an hour, but the other 23 and a half hours of a day weren't silent. You know, the Bible says they, they, the angels, the glory was so strong, they fell down, holy, holy, holy. They cried day and night, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. The four and twenty elders fell on their faces and cast their crowns down. They were worshiping. That's heaven. Seems on earth you have too much noise, too much unanointed music, too much noise, or else nothing at all. Sometimes nothing at all is good. Because I don't put, here's another key to personal deliverance. You'll need less of it if you don't fill your temple with the wrong things. I don't listen to garbage music. I don't listen to garbage noise. I always tell people, turn, I get in a car, do you need the radio? I say it politely. And they, they get it. If they don't get it, we have to repeat it. Or if someone's there with me, they have to tell them, kind of whisper. Please switch that off. I want to hear God. I want to hear my thoughts. I want to talk on the phone. I need to do. I don't need this some kind of sinners bellowing out. Like the public transportation in certain places. They put on all this noise, right? It's the devil to try to enslave you and mess you up and afflict you. And you put up with that sitting in tightness, small stinking thing, bouncing, moving, tight, constricted. I don't know how people don't do it without I can actually do that without losing their minds. And then they're playing noise. I love the story of the Messiah guy. A Messiah guy got on, looked very calm, and he, uh, he, uh, he uh, said, turn that off. And they laughed at him. And then he took his rungu, this big stick he has with a big wood piece on it, and he broke all the speakers. Psh, 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 psh. They couldn't stop him, and they were very afraid after that. Everybody was quiet after that. They never said another word. One guy, I think he, I think he went to the hospital and died. Some guy started to yell at this Messiah guy, act like he's going to fight with him. The Messiah, they don't play. These are the lion killers. They go out there, grab a lion, and kill it. They'd be very quiet. They won't talk much, but don't cross them. And the story goes that the guy turned around, and he took his rungu, and... <laughs> that was the end of that guy. 
So don't listen to the wrong stuff. It damages the temple. Don't watch silly things. Use the internet and media for self-education. You'll get better. You'll get better at living this, this life. And your life will become more successful. Can you say amen? Well, I've spoken it. It's a prophetic word. Personal deliverance. God is destroying the roots of bitterness. Father, thank you for this in Jesus' name. That your people are going to be free from everything the devil and his ugly friends and evildoers have done. They'll come out unscathed, undamaged, unwounded, and made whole in Jesus' name that they can walk to the higher dimensions that God has in store for us all. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, as I said I would, I was in Paris, France, and I was preaching in a very great big church there, a really amazing church. And while I was speaking, they were behind me, the, choir, the singers were behind me, and there was one lady right in the middle, very attractive lady, very, very, very fine and all that. But I saw into her soul. The Lord opened my eyes. I saw right into her heart, her mind, her inside of her. And the Lord showed me this horrible realm of low self-esteem because she'd been abused or I, I don't know what it was. I, God didn't show me all that, but I just saw the effect. I didn't see the cause. I didn't need to see it. I was preaching. I, I didn't need to see all that, you know, if I could explain that prophetically. I didn't need to see everything, but I saw the effect. And the Lord said, I want you to deliver her right now, son. I said, yes. I stopped what I was doing. The anointing fell. I turned around. I stretched my hand out toward her. I went and I began to speak. What I said, I don't remember. I guess it was recorded. But I, I said some things. And the power of God hit her. Boom! Somebody had to get behind her and grab her. She's on the floor. She laid there the whole rest of the service on the platform. Out. Under, slain. Under the power of the Holy Ghost. And when she got up, she was beaming like the noonday sun. Like Moses came off, they had to cover him. They said, the glory is too much on you. We can't look your way. Like God said, you can't look at my face and live. Moses was so immersed in the, God told him that. He said, show me your glory. God said, I can't show you all of it. Exodus 33, read that in Exodus 33, especially in the eighth verse. Show me your glory. Exodus 33, verse eight. Show me your glory. God said, I will. Stay here in the cleft of the rock and I'll pass by and you'll see my back parts as I pass by. But you cannot look at my face and yet live. And still live. She was a changed person from that day and I thought, God, if you sent me all the thousands of miles I traveled, all the expense, all the time, all the effort, all the strain, all the wherewithal, all the wear and tear, all the stress, all the time consumed, all the logistics of getting there. If you sent me to Paris, France, just to deliver that woman, I say it's worth it all. I cried, I almost cried when I said it. I thought so. I felt such deep compassion for people. Another story, I was, it was in New York City. It was in a great church. And this, uh, this young man was there, and he was... So unsure of himself, even his body language, even when he walked, he was nervous. I tell you, you need to get free from all that garbage. If you're around me, get free from it. Don't walk and be nervous and you, you mess your own self up. And you, the atmosphere is not as controlled and powerful and confident as it should be. I spoke this over these business people yesterday that came to pray. When I had the open vision, I saw this thing about personal deliverance flowing again. And I said, confidence is the key. Confidence. Great confidence. Gives you strength to control any environment. It's, it was said, 
It was said in the seminar, yes, in the business meeting yesterday, it was said, this was said by a man piping in from America by online. He said, the most excited person in the room is always the winner. They always win. And I, I took it a step further, enthusiastic. The most enthusiastic person always wins in the situation. They get the deal, they get the sale, they get the favor, they get noticed, they get respected, they get honored, they get connected. Now you could be quiet and your track record can speak for you of what God's used you to do. You could be known for that. You could carry so much glory that it just affects people without you saying a lot. You know what I mean? But in a performance environment, you know, you ever see someone that's... One of my dear people in America told me this testimony yesterday. We had a long conversation. They told me that this businessman told them they were serving in the hospitality industry. They, they, they're there uh, working there. And they said, this man said, I'm going to give a great review uh, on the thing for this place because I've never met anybody like you that was so polished, so together, so gracious, so kind, so caring. I've never, in all my travels around the world, all the hotels I've stayed in, all the trips I've taken in business, I've, you're the greatest person I've ever, what a testimony. You're the greatest person I've ever seen. You made me feel so taken care of, so well cared for. And this is one of my very dear close people. Now that didn't come just by chance, a fleeting thought. One day I woke up and felt like I should be gracious to people. It was a process of development in them as an astute business person, as a, as a brilliant person, and as a mature believer filled with the Holy Ghost. You see? That was a pro it's a process that comes over time. It doesn't just happen just overnight. But this young man was walking around very unsure of himself, and I asked the Lord, what is wrong with him? He's unnerving the environment. He's making me, he's, he's un I'm unsettled, like, looking at him. I feel, I could feel this thing. When he walked in our way, he could feel it coming. And the Lord says, the Lord said to me, he said, no, pray for him. Pray for him for deliverance. I said, I'll be glad to. He, he said, this guy, this young man, he's been all up in the wrong environment. He's been mishandled. He's been rejected. He's been overlooked. He's been, I thought, ah, yeah. Thus, the result of low self-esteem, a, a, a poor self-image. I pray for him. Moving across the world from New York City, Paris, France, New York City, now Nairobi, Kenya. I was asked by these leaders to, do, to dedicate a new church building it would seat about 800 people. The place was completely full and there were hundreds of people outside. And when I asked about the event, like, was this pastor known here? Did he have all this following? Many people said, no, we don't even know who he is. And they chuckled and left, like they didn't even care about him. They, we don't even know him. We don't even know him. We never heard of him. We don't know. We heard you were coming, prophet. And this is why all the people came. This is how our meetings were. Standing room only, and there were always overflow crowds outside. Every event we did. As the, the, this great revival was moving in Nairobi, Kenya. Wow. And uh, I spoke two days. The second day, and the Lord had me lay hands on the host for a, a business anointing to touch them. Can I tell you? I don't know whatever became of their church. Leave that there. Uh, they're there, but, but in business, they did very well. They prospered. They made millions and millions and millions in business. And I met him recently. He came to a place where a conference where I was. And we met in the back room, and he began to tell the testimony of all that he's doing now. And I thought... I remember, I traced this back to the time when God had me lay hands on you and your wife on the platform there, and the Lord spoke about the entrepreneurship anointing, the business anointing for you to prosper in business. And my God, we see, and hearing your testimony again now, how it's really 
happen in great ways. So the second day, that was the first. Second day, uh, at the end of the meeting, the, the glory fell. I can't explain it. The atmosphere changed. The presence of God filled the whole place. And this is what we need to see. I saw this in a vision yesterday, and I'm prophesying here. Some of you people that are following us in our ministry for some time, you need to get excited because this, this power and glory from heaven is, a, is going to manifest again. I'm not just saying that because I'm preaching and it's a good thing to say and I hope so and I wish so and I'd like to see it. I'm telling you prophetically, the Lord's showing me, stirring it up again and I have a very deep desire for this to happen. And I'll give you one more, Baltimore, Maryland. Let me get back there in a minute. Annapolis, Maryland, excuse me, near Baltimore. In between, in between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. A town called Annapolis, Maryland. I was preaching there. I'll get to that in a second. And this wave of glory came, and I stood, I walked to the edge of the platform, right to the very edge. My tippy toes were right at the edge. And I just said, everybody stand. Lift your hands. The power of God is coming, and here's the word of the Lord. Everything that has affected you, and this, I speak this again right now. I'm re-prophesying this. Across the airways right now. Take this right now where you are. God's reactivating this glory and it's going to touch you now. You weren't in that meeting. Many hundreds of people were touched there. But I want to tell you, God's going to do it again right now. I said everything and I saw it from childhood. Wrong scenarios, bad upbringing, all kinds of problems, abuse, broken relationships, afflictions, attacks, you know, just name it. Uh, again, underscore, fill in all the blanks. I don't have time. I, I want to get through this message too and finish this. Uh, you know, for the sake of time and all that, but whatever. Although we have free course, we can speak as long as we need to here, but I just want to, I want to put this all here, just put it out there. Now, the glory of God, I'm telling you, came off the platform, came around. The whole place was swirling. It's like the cloud of glory was blowing like a wind, a circular wind in the whole place. And I said, in Jesus' name, y'all are going to be delivered right now. Get ready. Lift your hands. I think I told people, join hands. I might have even done that. I don't quite remember exactly. And I said, the fire of God's coming. Fire! Be released. Even right now. Let it happen again. And the power of God hit the whole place. People were sling. People fell down. They were screaming, shrieking, shouting. They broke the chairs. They fell on top of each other, over each other. Hundreds of people went down in a wave of glory, just like that. And I'm telling you, they couldn't get up. I, I watched. I stayed around a long time and finished the service. We, I don't know what we did after that. We did some other things in the service. There were some other things to do. Finished. The people were still slain under the anointing. And they were, some of them had to be carried out. And I watched a few of the men and a few of the women, they were carried. Their noses were running. Their tears had flooded their cheeks. They were, and they were, they were beside themselves. And they had to be picked up and literally walked out of the place because the power of God had come so strong. Is that amazing? Should we be seeing that as much as possible and all the time? Yes. Are we going to see it again? Yes. Is God going to do that again and again? Yes. He, he will. I saw it in a vision yesterday again. Baltimore, Maryland. Annapolis, Maryland. Let's go there. I remember I was preaching. I was talking about the prophetic and I was also prophesying over the church. All in, all in this flow. Great church. Great church in, in Annapolis, Maryland. And that's when God spoke to me about President Bill Clinton's impeachment. That's when he spoke to me about 9-11. I saw it in an open vision. And this was four years before. By the way, this is a long time ago. This was in 1997. About May or June, July, was it August even? Somewhere in those months in the year 1997. I drove from somewhere far away, from New York or somewhere, I can't remember, I think from New York. 
and I was in Baltimore, I think, at one church, and I went over to, a, I was in Washington, D.C., I went over to Highway Route 50, I think it is, it's a split that goes, to, you go that way, it says Annapolis, Maryland, turn that way, drive. Got all, I'd never been there, got all the way to the church. As I was driving, God was giving me the words about Bill Clinton's impeachment coming, two congressmen that were going to come up on tremendous uh, exposures, and that it happened, I could say their names. And uh, they were expelled from Congress. And of course, the thing with Bill Clinton. And while I was driving, I also saw an open vision. While I was driving on the highway, high speed driving, I'm seeing the road, but I'm seeing a vision. I saw the skyline of New York and I saw explosions. This was in the middle of the year in 1997. Now, you know, four years later, September 11, 2001, is when that event happened at the Twin Towers in New York City, what we call the infamous 9-11. I saw it. And the Lord said, this will happen. You know, people try to chide me and say, you know, weren't you supposed to warn the world? Weren't you supposed to tell everybody to pray? Weren't we all supposed to pray to divert it? And I said, well, that's a good thought. Thank you for that. Maybe that's set out of a kind heart or a right motive, but the Lord said, he didn't say any of that to me. He said, this will happen. And it did. In fact, I was on television, on TBN. Can you believe it? On the TBN, T Trinity Broadcast Network, I was speaking and I was, on, I was an a guest, as a li uh, live guest in the interview in the, in the Praise the Lord program. And uh, they actually superimposed on green uh, backdrop behind my head. The Twin Towers were right behind my head when I saw the video later. And I was about to say it because it was right after the time when I had that open vision in Maryland, Washington, D.C. And now I was back in, in uh, another state. And we were doing the Praise the Lord program. And I was just about to say it. I was talking about Kenya because I was... Uh, Something was being stirred up about Africa at the time. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I was about to talk about the vision. And the Lord just took the thought out of my mind and I never got to say it. The program ended. I got back to my hotel. I was like, oh my God. Father, I thought about, was I supposed to say that? I'm so sorry, he said. The Lord came and put his hand on my shoulder and said, son, don't worry. I didn't want you to say it. Then and there, I didn't want you to say it. Do you know, my father was a great political leader. He's in heaven now. We led him to the Lord. He's enjoying himself upstairs with the boss. And my mom and his parents, we led them all to the Lord. Because in my family, none of us were Christians. None of us. Nobody that we could remember on any side, either side of the family, all the way back in generations. We never knew of anybody that was born again. How can I say that? Because you know what? When someone's born again, guess what? They're the Jesus person. They've got, come preaching to everybody. There's no way you get radically saved and born again and you're not going to witness to your family and tell them about Jesus. It had never happened in our lives. There was nobody in our family, none of our relatives, ever, that we heard of that. We thought born again Christians, you know, they'd show a clip on TV with the people. This is what I thought before I got saved. I was, had a funny attitude. I won't say more. And uh, you have the people like lifting their hands, closing their eyes, squinting like this, like, uh, and there's some music. And I thought, what? I looked at the TV and I, said, I think I said to my, my own father one day, uh, family, I said, well, what's wrong with these people? What's up with that? And these are the born again Christians. What is that? L little did I know that from my mother's womb, I'm already a man, but, but I was called to be God's prophet to the nations. I, I didn't know it yet, but Jesus appeared to me after he saved me and in the open vision ordained me prophetically from heaven, came, I had the visitation. Like Paul on, like Saul of Tarsus on Damascus Road became Paul the great apostle. Jesus appeared to him. It didn't come from another man telling him the story, grabbing his hand, let's pray together, come to church come to the altar. It didn't happen like that with me. 
That's what we thought of the born again Christians. So, anyway, my dad was the political boss of New York for like 30 years. He was the leader of the of the party there. Everybody that was in politics came through him back in those years. And my father uh, brokered, put together the Northern Ireland Peace Treaty between England and Northern Ireland, where you had the IRA, the Irish Republican Army, uh, doing terroristic acts because they're mad at the Brits for whatever the... That all ended from my father's uh, congressional... Uh, bill that he got put through. And he brought President Bill Clinton on Air Force One to Belfast. My father arranged it, went with him on the presidential jet, Air Force One, the president, the president of the United States, Bill Clinton, and my father. They went to Belfast, Ireland and in 1994, and Bill Clinton, President Bill Clinton signed the peace treaty between the two, and it ended there. No more debts, no more bombings, it all stopped. My father, my own father, put that together. So now, when 9-11 uh, had happened, because of my father's stature and influence, we, we wanted to see. So they gave us a, a police escort. They came to the house and brought us down and drove us down to the World Trade Center. And we actually went inside where the, where the buildings had fallen. Guess what? It was horrible. Jagged metal everywhere. Pieces of concrete and mess everywhere. It was massive. The smoke was still burning from the buildings falling. You know the fire got lit down below? Either some gas lines or oil lines, I don't know what. And it was still on fire and the smoke was still coming up for days and days on end after the buildings had fallen. They had a cleanup crew to go in there to try to clean it all out. During that process, we were taken down there, and they had a stage where President George Bush now came there and gave a speech right from ground, what they called it ground zero, where the, where the buildings had fallen from, the, from the, uh, that horrible event. 9-11. And they had a wall put up. And everybody signed the wall. And I got close to it and I looked. And my father was speaking. You know, he, they gave him some, he gave us a little speech. And I was right behind him and I was looking at the wall and I saw Ray Romano, an actor, some actor, TV actor. He, he had written something. Madonna, the singer, Madonna. She wrote something. George W. Bush, the president, he wrote something. And who else? Some other names, I, if I can remember them all. Those three, I, vividly, I remember. So I, there was a, a, like a ledge and, a, and a, a marker. So here's what I did. I picked it up and I wrote, let revival break out in NYC, dot, dot, dot. And I signed my initials like this, and I drew a heart around it, around my initials with a cross, and I wrote my website. <laughs> oh, my name, I think I wrote my website. So my father, he had turned around and peeked and watched what I was doing, and then we got back to the house, and he says, he's very sober, he's very somber, he's sitting at the table, and he said, I want to, I want to speak to you a minute. I walked over and the atmosphere was very eerie. It was very, a little bit scary, you know? But I said, yes, Dad. He said, I want to tell you something, son. He said, that is an international crime scene. I said, oh. He said, I saw you writing. I saw what you wrote there. He said, uh, I just want to tell you it's, it's a very serious so I was like, okay, ooh. <laughs> I just kind of bowed out. And, but I meant what I wrote. <laughs> I can't take it back, praise the Lord. And I can't tell you how many testimonies we heard of believers that just felt not to go to work that day. They just couldn't get there that Tuesday morning, 8 o'clock in the morning, to get to uh, arrive in the World Trade Center Twin Towers 
thousands and thousands of people that worked there. But what a terrible thing that happened there. So back from New York City now, back to Annapolis, Maryland, because this is where I'm saying all that because this is what this originated from, that's where I saw the vision of that event happening four years before. I saw the explosions of the buildings. And the Lord said, the loss of life will be in the thousands. He said it to me. Nothing like this had ever happened in New York. Right? Who could imagine? And the Lord speaks this whole thing to me. And he said, the news of this will cover almost 100% of the entire globe. He said the word, he said the term. The number, 95%. 95%, which meaning there's probably 5% of places that don't have any television. They're way, you know, islands or whatever, indigenous people somewhere. They don't have access to media, news. There are still some people on the earth like that. Not many, very few that are in places like that. But he said like 90, I heard the, 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 the number, 95, at least 95% of the earth the news of this will go around the entire planet and the loss of life in the thousands. And I saw in the vision the buildings exploding and falling and the fire and the smoke. I saw it on the highway driving from Washington, D.C. to Annapolis, Maryland in an open vision in the middle of 1997, four years before it happened. Then there we were. Ground zero after it happened with my great father and the other people. My God. Now in the meeting in Annapolis, as I was saying, in this great church, I was ministering. And then at the end of the meeting, I tell you, it happened, it happened, this happened. The power of God rose up so strong upon me, in me, on me, however you want to say, uh, both on the external and the internal and the atmosphere. And, and I called some people forward. I called, I called people forward. This is what I did. And I'm calling you today. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to reenact this. That's why I'm saying all this. I'm, I'm reenacting it. I don't just want to tell the testimony and people go, oh, that's great. Uh, it's information. I don't want information. I want impartation. I don't want the little touch of what we call revival. I want reformation and revolution. I want this thing to manifest. The God of the miraculous to show up. That the power of God can flow like this again out through us, through our ministry, through our voice, and through live events, and through these blessed hands, and all of that. And I call people forward that were called to the ministry. Thank you, Lord, another one. I also did this in Brussels, Belgium. And the, the, the host pastor didn't like it at all. In fact, he followed me around with a microphone because I was going through the crowd calling out people. He didn't like it at all. He was furious. I'll tell you, I had another meeting, in, two other meetings I had in London. One guy, the Lord says, I don't listen to him uh, when he talks. And the people told me later, he's, he's a very corrupt guy. And I called out some people and I told them some truthful things. I said, I told them, and this was a U Ugandan people. It was a Ugandan church in London, England. Can you imagine? And the, the guy there, the Lord says, I don't like him. I don't listen to him. I said, whoa, I can't say I've heard that everywhere. But, uh, and I told the people as much as I could because I knew I was going out the door and never coming back again. And the pastor was actually physically assaulting me, like pushing me in the back and pulling my jacket and trying to reach to grab the microphone out of my hand while I was speaking. He said, that really ha can that really happen? Oh, yeah, it happened. I did all I could, and then I got out of there. While he was speaking, before they introduced me, once the Lord spoke to me, he said, he's not good, I'm, I don't listen to him. It's like blah, 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 like the Charlie Brown TV show. There was a character in there, I think the teacher, who they made the voice like blah, 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 blah. That's the way they did it in the, the Charlie Brown TV show. Uh, that old, this is old school, many decades back, the cartoon Charlie Brown. And I was like that, like I couldn't hear anything. And I just internalized and I began to write things from the Spirit of the Lord as I was writing. I was writing some notes, I was writing something from one of my books and I just got lost in my seat and I exited the meeting by going internal, down, and I was there, but I wasn't there. 
Then uh, they're about to call my name, and somebody, the, 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 the pastor next to me was like, elbowing me like, oh, it's your turn, you're coming up. I was like, oh, okay, I came out of it, and I said, okay, now I'm back. I'm, I was away somewhere in the spirit, now I'm back, okay, let's go. And I got up, and this man didn't really want me to say anything. Because I started getting into, you know, y'all need to be careful where you are. You need to pray about what church you're in. You need to, people here that are called of God. You're good people. You can't be connected to the wrong thing. And I think the guy tried to, started because he's very guilty, started to figure out what I was doing. I thought, I only have one chance at this. I'm here. I'm leaving. I'll never be here again. Let me, let me just, uh, let me fire away. As I should do as God's servant to help people. Maybe to rescue them, some of them. You know, everybody won't always hear that, what you're saying. But in the spirit, it's released, and then God has something to work with, you know. So, uh, another church, I said something. The pastor was so religious, he couldn't handle it. Anyway, another, a lot of stories. But in Brussels, Belgium, the Lord had me, instead of preaching, I preached a little bit, then I walked out through the crowd and I, I saw the light shine over people's heads. This is the way I was seeing. And I, I'd go to this person. I'd tell them, you're called of God. Be blessed. Let the fire come on you. You, 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 you. This guy here, the pastor, he didn't want me to do that at all. And he was my interpreter. He was following me around. And finally I got done. It was, the atmosphere was very uncomfortable. I went and sat down. And I kind of put my hands together and said, oh, my God, what did I just do? <laughs> This, this, this is not okay. So the pastor, he came and uh, he was Congolese, I think, you know, in Brussels, Belgium. They speak French, and he, but he, this is people from the Congo. And he slapped a big stack of money, you know, which was okay. And on the table like that, that's my offering, you know, and I was like, oof. I never saw him again. Never, till today, all those years ago, I never... Did I really care afterwards? No, I thought I, I did the right thing by the Spirit of the Lord. Always obey God. Because like in Annapolis, Maryland, I see the parallel to the, what, the meeting in Brussels, Belgium, in Europe. The, the same thing. I called the people forward in that meeting in Maryland, Annapolis, Maryland, that were called of God. Yeah, and people came to the front. I said, you may not even be in ministry yet, but you know you're called of God. You know you have a calling upon your life. I want to pray for you that you get launched into it, that it happens. And I'm telling you, I went to, I started to go down the line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty. People were slain forcefully under the power. They couldn't get up. I'll go one more while I'm on it. Let's go. Let's travel over to Tampa, Florida. Wow. Uh, famous evangelist in America. Very famous. Very, very famous evangelist. He was doing a week-long meeting. He was doing the night services, and he asked me to speak to do the day services. So I did the daytime service, Monday through Friday, five days, Monday through Friday, and he did the evening services. So I think mine started at 10 or 11. I spoke about, about 11 o'clock in the morning, and he did the evening services, 7 o'clock every night. And uh, in those meetings, there were people that came from work and they couldn't get back to the office. They were slain in the power of God. I'm telling you, people were lined up, laid out in the aisles everywhere. I went through the crowd praying for people. Let me tell you, this is the thing we talk about, we call days of revival. Lift your hands, I wanna prophesy it's coming again. And people are gonna get fired, fired up by the Holy Ghost. I mean manifestations, man, I'm in something here. Manifestations, kabro shekelahati. The power of the Holy Ghost. That's what we need more than anything. You would think we need this, we need that, we need that. No. I, I, my prophet friend yesterday in the business event, this is what he said. He got up to talk about building an altar. He said, people in other religions, they build altars. The expansion of the, in the Expo Center where we actually were, the mall was a very small mall years ago, 50 years ago. They built this little mall. Then they expanded it a bit. Now they built this whole other wing onto it. And they said they brought their guru there. They're Indians. They brought their gurus there 
to be all dressed up in their stuff to do their yeah, 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 and dedicate it. Like it's a very spiritual event. And then you have people in other religions, you know, they, they close their shops at certain times of the day. And they can gauge and say, who's going to line up to, uh, to buy stuff during those hours? Not their own people, but the others, meaning even Christians, even other people. And they'll wait, they'll be back to buy the stuff when they come back. But they're going to go and do their prayers or whatever they do. And they seem to get along with it. What, what's the system? And I, 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 I felt like when he was saying all that, I was like, okay, interesting point. We get the point. We need to take the concept. We need to build our altars. And he said this, and I, I want to uh, honor the, this servant of God, my, my, my man who uh, served, served me for some time. He, and has a great church now, he... Uh, he said, we need to take it by, by the word of God, by the Bible. I thought, I was, tell, I was talking on the phone about this uh, last night, one of my dear people. I said, this is, this is amazing. I, I got an idea. I thought, when we're in our building, and the person shouted and said, yes, I see it. I said, man, the anointing is on this right now. And I recorded that, that word, because I, I, when I get to speak it in that realm, I, I want to document it. So I, I recorded it. And... Uh, I recorded that, and I said, I was like, I was like, yeah, this is great. I see it. I see it. You know, when you see it, you can do it. You can't seize it until you see it. If you say it, you'll see it. But if you, if you don't see it, you won't say it. And if you don't do either one, you'll never have it. Sight and speech creates. God always works through those. And the manifestation of his power by the Holy Ghost. Father, let the anointing that's here right now and coming alive in this studio, move upon every person watching right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We're going to see it. I saw it and I thought, let's do one conference on this in my building upcoming and have great speakers come in and they do their part teaching because well, I, 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 I shouldn't have to do it all. And go through this thing about the scriptural premise of building an altar. You know, Solomon had an altar in his temple. David had altars. Bethel was an altar. Abraham had altars. Jacob had altars. Isaac had altars. These people, they made this place where they met with God. Psalm 91 talks about the secret place of the Most High, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. Where is that? It's a place. I want to say it's being close to God also. In the purpose and in the will of God. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says, When you ask things according to his will, he'll grant those things to you. And Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, The things you desire, pray, pray for those things. And as you're praying, believe you receive them and you'll have them. But the ultimate premise of it all is that it's according to the will of God. I said this the other night when the Lord was speaking about, I, I entitled this, the, the God of Miracles, Volume 2, Our Great Helper. He is. The Lord said, I'll help you. And I said, well, I, I said, that I made this point. It's a Facebook Live uh, little message I did outside somewhere. You'll see it. It's on the Facebook, facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. Just go straight to the page. You'll find it there. You know, some people are looking at all my pages. I have a few pages tied to the same you could be in another page. Just use that one. That's the main one I'm using. Facebook, there's Dr. Thomas Manton, which is a public figure page. We'll develop that more. But I found out the people that follow us on the lives, they seem to be on the personal page. And when I do it from the ministry page, they, somehow they don't get the notification or they're not there. So path of least resistance, I gave up on that for a minute. I said, let's stay on the personal page. Although we should be developing the public figure page with more of the marketing, social media people helping us and all that. And these brilliant people helping us will we'll, we'll blow that thing out to the hundreds of thousands and to the millions of followers around the world that can follow us online. Praise the Lord. In Jesus' name, it's manifesting. Our YouTube channel is also growing. Uh, YouTube.com forward sign at sign dr. Thomas Manton, it's a little longer, youtube.com forward sign, we can put it on the screen, 
at sign DR Thomas Manton and direct to our YouTube channel. Hit subscribe, hit like, hit share. I mean, share the videos with your friends, send them out, put them on your statuses, put them on your walls. Why not put them on your social media, share the messages. It's a seed you're sowing to help other people be blessed like you're being blessed from these messages. So the Lord will bless you for doing that. Now, The Lord said, I'll help you. And then I thought about this, and this is what I said in the message. I said, I said, uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go back and watch it. The God of Miracles, Volume 2, Our Great Helper. It's a Facebook Live. It's on the Facebook page. Facebook.com forward sign Thomas Manton. Type that in your WhatsApp, whatever, to yourself. It'll become a blue link. Click it. It'll take you right to the page, and there you'll be. Okay? Very simple. And then share the page, share the post, share it with your friends, share it on your own page. Thank you very much. And I said this. I said, success, we really want to live and walk in success. But it, if God didn't help us first, how can it really happen? All success and all favor and all grace comes from the hand of the Lord. I saw a little clip that we put on uh, TikTok. Thank you for doing that. little clip about the promotion of the Lord. A little short statement I made in the conference I was speaking at. And the Lord said, a reminder, promotion doesn't come from here or there. It comes from you walking with the Lord, and then he takes you to higher levels. I want to say in business, in ministry, let me finish this and get out of here. This is paramount for you and everything that's in you that's not right. God is going to rip it out. Lift your hands. Father, I speak the fire of God is coming to every person who desires to be free. Free, free, free. And things that you don't even know that are affecting you. They've blocked you away. They've limited you. And the devil laughs. Says, ah, I put a snare around them. I put an oppression over them. I put some obstacles in their way. I put some limitations on them. I got something from my world connected to their world. Even though they're Christians and they're walking with God and all that to, to the degree that they are. But there's something that's still tied to other experiences. Regardless of who you are, what that issue is, Whatever was done against you, whatever happened, whatever you did that was wrong, whoever you were connected with that wasn't right, the wrong person that you trusted, wherever that portal opened, that door opened for the enemy, it needs to be slammed shut. And I prophesy God is delivering people right now. Karabosha. Again, I wish we had the time for the music. Everybody stand. Let's worship. Let's shout. But I'm in the studio so <laughs> one day, sweet Jesus, we're going to have all that it's very soon. But right now, I just want to release the word of the Lord and jump off here. God is going to deliver you. Stretch your hands out right now. If you have your phone in your hand as a point of contact, touch it. If you're watching on the screen, put your hand. Get up, walk over to the screen, put your hand on top of your television. You don't have to put your fingerprints right on the glass. You can just put your hand on top. I became a master at this because I'm watching anointed stuff. Anywhere I am in the world, big screen TV. I'm not going to go put my hands like this, and then when you turn it off, you see the handprint, and I have to figure out how to. You can do that if you want. I'm not tip. But I just grab the top of the frame of this thing and, and connect with the anointing that's tangible, that can come through a, a, a service or a servant of God as they're flowing. When the presence of God is moving live in the meeting, I want to partake of that glory. I can't be there. I may be thousands. I may be on the other side of the world. Sometimes I'm 10,000 miles, 8,000 and 10,000 miles away from where the conference is happening, where the meeting is going, or even more. If you go further places, but I want to connect. We need to always be receiving from the true anointing. Leave the pontificators alone, those with their own agendas, making noise. Maybe they're gifted and they got the, the, enough energy to run around and shout. 
But I, 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 I don't get impressed by that. I look at where's the glory, where's the content, where's the information, where's the revelation, where is God? Where is the man or the woman that God is speaking through, that his anointing is coming through? That's who, that's who I want to be friends with. That's who I want to, I want to partake of that. Now, if you want to get somewhere in business, here's a great principle. You have to find someone that is already where you want to be. Let's not just focus on our to-do list all the time. To-do, I have to do this, I have to do this. Let's focus on, let's, let's make another list. Let's call it our to-be list. What do I want to be? What do I want to become? What do I want to have? What do I want to possess? How am I going to get there? God has to break you out of the environment you're in, and this is in the realm of deliverance and all that, pro progressing you to the next place, but you got to get with people that are great. That's a, part of, that's a part of the thing. And they'll help you get to where you want to be. But all of these things that work against us, those foxes that spoil the vines, those little sins, those lack of control, the effects, even, listen, even the effects of evil things that have come against us. They have, to, they have to be washed out and wiped out. And I prophesy to you today as a servant, as God's own servant, he's doing it for you right now. In Jesus' name. All bitterness, all anger, all hatred, all malice. You know, the, you know the, Paul talked about those things. Those are real. One more thing. The conviction of the Holy Ghost is not just for the world. John 16. I reprove people of sin and I, I bring conviction. That's not just for the sinners. It's also for the church. It's also for preachers. It's also for leaders. Can I tell you, I'm very sensitive prophetically. I, I have a big conversation, big conversations go on inside of me, I'm very sensitive. I may be seeing something, hearing something, and I won't even tell you that I'm hearing all this. But I'm very uh, switched on like that. It's costly because it's painful sometimes. You see, you, and you, when you have a lot of wisdom, you see foolishness, it's very grievous. That's another thing. But, You can feel convicted about something. That's a good thing. Flow with that. Learn from that. But just the scriptures I shared, a few of them, of we got to have love one for another. We need to be filled with the love of God by the Holy Ghost. As disciples, we need to watch what we say, what we, you know, how we carry on, and guard the heart, for out of it flow, out of it flow the issues of life. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But guess what? If the bitter well, the pool of bitter water, however you want to say it, has been drained out of you and extracted from you, it's been flushed out of you, there's nothing more, there's nothing more, there's nothing more that can reference it. The devil and whatever he's done or tries to do is no match for our victory. Did you get that? The devil, whatever he's done, or through anyone, or him himself, or any evil force, evil whatever, evil doer, whatever is in that world is no match for our victory in Christ Jesus. Father, I thank you for the baptism of the fire of the Holy Ghost coming upon everybody to rip out every root of bitterness, every discouragement, every discouragement, every oppression, every disease, every oppression, every affliction, right now in Jesus' name. And we are delivered in Jesus' name. More later, I'm Thomas Mantle IV. God bless you. I'm praying for you. Now, sow your seed, your tithes, your offerings, the uh, announcements, uh, things, information for that will be on the screen of how you can do that. I look forward to hearing from you. I count you my partner when you sow into this grace. And when I see you there, I'm praying for you. Somebody sent a seed yesterday and said, you prophesied while you were in Archbishop's uh, church. And I was there. 
and you actually came to prophesy over me and you're praying for people and you said international business you're going to be in it and the person wrote a seed they sent the seed by M-Pesa and they uh, called me to make sure that I got it to say hi and all that turns out they work for the government they got a lot of other connections and uh, they said you prophesied I'd be in international business I didn't know but I, I'm in it now we're doing it it's going very well I said, great, come and see me. Let's make an appointment. So I told them when to call me. And I want to hear more about it and pray for them again that it just be further established and extremely successful. That was a deliverance word, a prophetic word, a creative word spoken through the prophet of God that came to manifest. I didn't know them. They were in the midst of a congregation of thousands of people. You know, Archbishop's Church on Sunday were preaching that he could have over... Uh, up to 12,000 people now in attendance. They put chairs everywhere. They're expanding the building. Uh, all this I prophesied, it's all happening. The expansion of the building there, the property there, and, and his ministry, everything's been so elevated that the last year. Oh, my God. Archbishop Harrison Nanga, many of you know him, the great father of faith in this land. He, he, you see his ministry, his stature, everything. is. God used me. He called me to come and prophesy and preach in his church many times. I think I've done, I've spoken over 12 times for him in the last season. And I don't know anybody else that's had that privilege. He doesn't really invite speakers to come. Unless it's a special conference or something like, okay, like that. But regularly speaking, he's doing all the meetings himself. But he wanted me to come and prophesy, and, and, and God used me to say the most astounding things, and they've all happened. Now, these people are having testimonies and miracles. And I only just spoke a quick word. Inter I see international business. We're doing the anointing service. They had the people follow me with the oil. Touch, boom, they fall out. Gone! I didn't see them again. And now they're writing me back. What you said came to pass, and here's my seed. You can sow a seed to get a miracle. By the way, more in the future, I'll be praying for people uh, live on the air. We're going to do some of that. We'll have some special. I can't do it when I'm teaching like this, uh, a message, but we'll, do, we'll have a separate event. Just it'll be a prophetic sessions, and those will be registration events. People will have to register for that and come in. We're uh, designing those now. Uh, we might have a few ones to just go out to everybody, but there'll be ones that you register for, and you'll have personal, a personal uh, uh, time with me, and I'll prophesy what God is saying. I want to do this with people around the world. Many people can't physically get to where I am, but we can do it online, and I'm thrilled about it. So we're devising a system on how we're going to do that, and uh, be looking forward to that. I'm going to be thrilled to pray over you. Like yesterday, this other man, I saw him, his business thing. He told me everything I said was true, and uh, it's amazing. And then this, this great prophet that was there who worked w with me at some point, the Lord spoke about a great building and property he's giving him, and he'll raise a mega church. Wow, this is phenomenal. The power of the prophetic grace to bring you into deliverance, and your destiny and fulfillment of the purpose that God has ordained. And God will even speak it in details. So into this anointing, it will, it will cause you to prosper. I can't say enough about that. It will cause you to prosper. It will cause things to happen for you. I look forward to hearing from you. The ways to do it are on the screen. From around the world, you can sow into this grace. I'm expecting to hear from you, and as I do, I'll be praying for you, and I'll be speaking prophetically over your life. Again, uh, you can get this great book. The Laws of Success is also coming out in an expanded reprint. But this is available in hard copy right now. We're almost sold out of them, out of the whole printing. And, uh, but it's also digitally available online. If, if you're one of my partners around the world and you've not gotten a copy of this yet, uh, digitally... Please remind me and don't be mad at me. I'm busy. I'm very busy doing speaking at a lot of events. Just remind me, okay? I'd like the digital copy, the ebook of this. Just remind me 
and I'll make sure you get it. Uh, many I wanted, I've wanted to send it to, and I know some, I've been so busy. Please remind me, I'll be glad for you to have it. By the way, this will also be in digital, and one more is already in digital, The Benefits of Excellence. I believe those in the current form are available now. So I can actually send these to you, and also this, if you're my generous partner. Okay? So you take action today, sow your seed, send your tithe, your offering, your first fruits, your outreach seed, your donation, your offering, however you like to say what it is, and sow into this grace, and the Lord will bless you mightily. I'm thrilled and privileged that I got through this and got to deliver this uncanny word of personal deliverance, God helping us to destroy every root of bitterness, every attack that came against us, every effect of every evil thing that's ever come against our lives. It's being destroyed by the anointing. And you, I prophesy, you are going to the next dimension of grace and success now in Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Matthew the fourth. I'll talk to you in the next one. Love you much. I'm praying for you. Looking forward to hear from you. Waiting for your correspondence. The Lord bless you. See you on the next one. Have a great day.